This weekend I wanted to make a couple of videos with different conclusions. And I'm not even sure I want to use the term conclusion because the idea here is that uh, the market is clearly um, grappling. Um, and so what I did, because you know, I can make a bullish or bearish argument based on certain charts. Uh, and what I did is I went through my 28 different indexes and I plucked out from those nine that I felt uh, made a good bearish argument and nine that made a good bullish argument. And uh, I'm obviously more comfortable talking about the bearish side, which is what I'm about to do now. But um, the bullish video will have an equal number of charts and I will try my best to seem sincere. <laughs> but the idea here is just to show that it, isn't, it is not crystal clear what's ahead. So um, we're going to head into the familiar territory right now of bearish arguments um, from these nine bespoke um, items. So let's, uh, let's thumb through them. The first one is this all world index. And what I like about this is the clarity of these tops. We had the um, you know, big old internet bubble top, if you want to call it that, the one that took place at the turn of the millennium. We had the financial crisis top here. And then we had our everything top way up here. And it's funny because this is so much higher than either of these others. There were along the way, as you can see here, some you know, larval formations of tops, you know, here and here and here, but they were really never allowed to blossom. The only one that really took hold and was dealt with swiftly was COVID. I mean, even from this great distance, you can see that in the span of literally, if you took out like five trading days, it would account for almost all of that drop. But it, it uh, because of the trillions and trillions thrown at the market, it rebounded explosively. So to my mind, this is the first time since the financial crisis that we've had an honest to goodness, clean uh, top like so. So that is still uh, intact. Although let's admit that this rebound we've had is far more substantial than anything seen here, which was basically, you know, no relief at all and here which was more zigzaggy but all the same it clearly you know was substantially lower each time so um this is a little concerning here's the comp q um this one i like because it is still uh, very plainly in the throes of lower highs uh, the most recent of which was here which was even swifter and just as powerful as this fellow right here. But this is being quite Fibonacci friendly, as you can see with this major support. And we are on the high side of this range. Um, so it, it isn't, you know, in and of itself bearish, bearish, but it simply does not negate the, the bearish setup that commenced in November, 2021. Uh, here's the Dow Jones large cap index and a bit of the same argument as we had with the all world. This one doesn't go back quite as far, so you can't really capture the internet bubble top, but you can, you can plainly see the financial crisis top. And then here again, like, so, uh, we've got this, uh, which was a very clean top was violated to some degree here. And we have so far maintained respect for this dashed line like so. So even in the midst of this so-called bearish video, you can, you can hear my little mental asterisks going on. It's not just so cut and dried. Here's the Hang Seng index. Um, obviously not a U.S. market, but you know, the world tends to move together. And I think this is another very fine example of a tremendous rebound, which butted up against a staggering amount of overhead supply, which uh, stopped it in its tracks as of this week. Uh, the Russell 2000. What I like about this one is how Fibonacci friendly it's being. Uh, the Fib is anchored to the bottom of the financial crisis and the tippity top lifetime high. And as we zoom in here, you can see that we have butted up against this level. Uh, first, we were just stuck on it right here, just like shoving back and forth across this line. So this line clearly has a lot of magnetic power. When it finally let go 
it fell beautifully to this Fibonacci. I mean, it's just magnificent. And then it came all the way back up. Again, beautiful. All the way down. I mean, this is just magical. Look at this. Can you believe it? I can hardly believe what I'm looking at. And then up again, like so. So range bound. And uh, now clearly it better turn tail. You know, it, it began tiptoeing that way on uh, Friday, but it, it's really got to uh, keep moving because if, if it just like, uh, you know, blithely goes about this line, it keeps ascending. Well, that could be trouble uh, as it is now. Uh, it's, it hasn't done any such thing. It's, it's behaving perfectly. Uh, overseas again, the, I'm not totally US centric, but this is a favorite of mine. And you know what a big fan I am of energy shorts. Um, and this one I've pointed out a number of times and it's, it's, uh, behaving itself absolutely magnificently. Uh, this dashed line is crucial and, uh, it came terrifyingly close to it, but it's been edging away from it. And you can see in the long term, this still looks absolutely beautiful. Just like this did back here. The utilities, um, very, very long-term chart here. It goes back many, many decades, actually like half a century, more than half a century. We were very much on the high side of it. And I mean, the, the financial crisis top on this was just a textbook example of a head and shoulders pattern, just absolutely splendid. And then what we've got here is a lot sloppier, but you can see quite plainly the lower lows and the, I mean, excuse me, the lower highs and the lower lows down here. XAU, the gold sector. Uh, this one also, with all assets moving together, uh, roared higher, but it seems that we've reached an exhaustion point. Gold dropped 5% Thursday and Friday. And uh, what we want to see, of course, is for it to resume its trip down toward this major supporting trend line. And the last item here is the Nicey MX composite. And uh, still very, very lofty, but as we look here, this trend line, which is anchored to the COVID crash low, was first violated right there. Um, and um, has respected that very much so afterwards. It's rather remarkable. Here and here and here and here and here, plainly illustrating itself as resistance, what used to be support. And so the, the sharpness of that line and the fact it's broken, I think is also helpful for the bearish argument. And that's it. That's all nine of them. So as you can see, not, not a wild eyed screaming bear. I've, I've got some, uh, notes here and there. Um, but, uh, that's the basic premise. So now I'm going to take a deep breath and go do the bullish video.